This is like a thing that we all have to live with. But what happened to them? At least I got out. And I didn't even get help. I didn't even tell anyone. I didn't even stop it. I didn't even do something. I could have helped them. I could have done something. But... Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The truth. A video that I've avoided for a very long time. Um, see, Eid that just passed by, it just triggered a lot of memories. And I just, I don't even know how to start this. Like, how do you start a video like this? How do you go about a video like this? How do you not think about all the consequences, all the... I don't even know. I don't even know. Um, I've just been playing around with these lights forever just to avoid making this video. And I knew because I, I'm avoiding it so much that I need to make it even more. And I know that inshallah, once I've cleared the air, once I've talked about it, I'm just going to feel more... I'm just gonna feel more liberated. I'm gonna feel like this 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 thing that's on my shoulder that's stopping me is it's is gone now. Um, oh Allah, grant me strength. Oh Allah, grant me the ability to be honest. Oh Allah, grant me the ability to be truthful and vulnerable. And oh Allah, grant me the ability to uh, explain myself and to help people. Allah allowed this video to help people because that's what this is about. It's about. It's not about me. It's not about me, what I've been through, it's about preventing other future SQs. It's about preventing people who are going through it right now, who've been through it, and just just so that no one else gets hurt. That's that's what this is really about. Um, <sighs> ya Allah. Ya Allah, help me. Okay. The problem with making a video like this, guys, it's isn't just like telling you it's about the residual the effects that come with this right like this is going to be put on the internet my students are going to watch this my children are going to watch this my wife's going to watch this my my family's going to watch this right who have no idea about any of these things this is a revelation for them and it's a revelation for you guys as well too and a lot of questions that get that that immediately get raised is just like why now why now? Okay, something happened. Why do you got to talk about it right now in this moment? Well, have you thought about maybe, you know, you wanted to share it, but you just never knew how to, and it's either now or never, you know, and you're, you're worried about what people might think about you. People might, ah, oh, that's not what, really, uh, really, really, now, okay. You know, you start believing that people won't believe you, and I can see why people don't share these messages. I can see why. I can see why they're afraid. They would rather just take it with them to their graves than share it with people who are just going to come off as someone who don't understand. And um, I'm sorry if I'm just mumbling around and just, you know, avoiding, I guess, I guess talking about it. But it, it, I'm just sharing the feelings that I have in regards to this. And there's no other way to explain it but to just explain it, you know? Um, this is while I was in Pakistan. Now, this is nothing against Pakistan at all. This can happen anywhere. It has nothing to do with Pakistan, but this is just where I was in that location at the time. I had um, some group of friends that used to live across... I can't, subhanAllah, I really cannot believe I'm doing this. Like, This is something I've wanted to do, but I just, just didn't have the courage to do it, guys. But Allahu Akbar, Allah, please, 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 please help me. <sighs> okay. This is, this is in Pakistan, and I have these friends that live across from me. And, uh... <sighs> You see, they were my friends, and uh, we would play cricket. We would just have fun. It wasn't anything else. It was just fun. It was just cricket. It was just, it was just fun stuff, man. You know, you're you're eleven years old. What do you know about the world? What do you know about the world? But something started to switch, 
something started to change. In those late nights when, you know, I'd go over to their home, something changed. One of the elder brothers of the f- uh, groups of friends that we prayed w- uh, p- prayed with. I wish that's what we were doing, praying with them. I wasn't. I was playing with them. I was playing with them. I wasn't praying with them. I was playing with them. One of the older brothers of the group that I would play with um, came with a new revelation for us all, for his brothers, for me, and one of their cousins that was with us as well too. And he basically got taught himself on how to masturbate. Okay. Now, one thing I just want to pause right here and just explain to you all that that the haram and that the wrong, I'm not saying it's like haram to master, I'm not saying these things, but what I'm saying is like something that's wrong is taught to you. Look at the story of Habil and Kabil. Like, Qabil, oh my God. Oh. Kabil was, was, oh man, I feel sick to my stomach. Qabil was someone who wanted to hurt his brother but didn't know how to. So shaitan came in the form of an animal and, you know, like showed him how to kill someone, you know. The same thing goes with us guys. Like when we want to do something wrong or haram, like someone has to show it to you. It's not in our nature to do like wrong things or haram things, you know, or nasty things or sinful things, you know. Someone has to show it to you. And what happened was that someone showed him how to do this. How they showed it to him? It's a different story. What they did to him, how they taught him, is a completely different story. But he taught us what it was and how to do it and the whole process behind it. And he would go to the bathroom, he'd come out, and he'd show you what's come out of him. It's just disgusting. Like, you know, think about this. This is not what you're supposed to be doing. This is not what you're supposed to be, you know, doing. And, you know, one might ask, where are his parents? What the parents are going to do? Like, the parents think that, you know, the group of friends are doing this, you know. And when you want to hide something from the parents, it's quite easy. If you think about it, it's very, very easy. Oh, I feel so sick. Oh. And he basically taught us how to to masturbate. He then further tried to teach us all how to like, like French kiss and stuff. Like, try to understand where I'm going with this, guys. He tried to teach us all this extra stuff and how to have like anal sex. This is what he tried to teach us. And he would teach us in the form of by essentially showing it and doing to his brothers like it was it was absolutely disgusting and what i'm trying to explain to you what i've realized later on from this is that essentially what happened was i was in a what you call a grooming gang and where the adults or the people who are elder teach the people who are a little lower but still older to teach the younger people how to do certain things. And um, unfortunately, this brother of theirs got entrapped in this grooming gang a little bit earlier than us all, right? Like he would have these friends that were a little bit more adult and we would see him with those friends and we're just like, what are you doing with them, bro? Like, you know, come hang out with us and come play cricket with us or whatever, whatever we were doing. But he obviously got allured into their group or whatever and what they were doing is they were teaching him how to perform and have these sexual type of things, right? And of course, because of the system in Pakistan where a lot of there's a lot of segregation and there's a lot of, you know, like non-mixing uh, with, with the boys and the girls, naturally he started to apply these techniques and things to the males and specifically his brothers and me, right? Um, but subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was always so merciful towards me without even me realizing, but he never allowed me to get caught up in this to the degree where I would actually go, go through with it. As in, like there were moments where he was trying to put me onto this, right? Through via peer pressure, via like all these other incentives to get me to do it, you know, not talking to me anymore, telling the group of friends not to talk to me anymore until I participated with them. And there was an evening where they tried to get me to participate this in, in this and well and subhanallah 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 
that when it was about to go down and to happen and they were trying to make me do a bunch of things like that, the doorbell rings to their house and it was my family calling me saying, hey, it's too late, you got to come home. Literally, saved by the bell as they say it. <sighs> Look how Allah always looked out. And uh, I remember, subhanAllah, like a little kid came to them, like a little girl. And to be funny, they put their hands underneath her where her private parts were. And they would make like little sounds like they're doing things to her. And I felt so uncomfortable. I felt so uncomfortable watching it. Like everyone's laughing. I'm like, uh, no, this is not right. This is not right. And one amongst them said, no, 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 stop, 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 stop. And they sent that kid away. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. The angels, the, the protectors, and every, everything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest and best of protectors. He protected that child and that child went away to back to their home or whatever. Astaghfirullah. Like how can we do these things guys? But the truth is that I witnessed this. I seen this happening in front of my own eyes. And it was absolutely filthy. It was absolutely disgusting. But it wasn't over. It wasn't over. And why, why did I mention Eid? Eid is the, the biggest one that had to do it. You know, and... Oh man, it was just so disgusting. It was so nasty because, because it was just wrong. It was wrong on every level. And I'm 11 years old or 12 or something like one of those ages at the time. And I know something is wrong. I know it's not right. Uh, you know, at this point, I, I had you know seen a few things of my own. You know, of like via like video and stuff like that. And I knew a man was supposed to be with a woman at the end of the day. You know, I knew that. So when they were doing it amongst each other, it was just homosexual. It was just. You know, it was it was homosexual stuff that they were doing amongst each other. And they wanted me to participate in this, guys. They just wanted me to do it as well, too. And they, I don't know. I don't know if it was a prized possession, being that I was, like, American and they were Pakistani. And, like, you know, like, they just got this American kid to do with them. I don't know what it was, you know. But they wanted me to partake in it as well, too. And they would try to get do things to me to get me aroused. I stuck for a lot, like... Like, it was disgusting. They tried to touch me in areas and stuff like that and to get me aroused and to do all that sort of stuff and for me to to do things to them and all that sort of stuff. And I, I, I couldn't do it. Like, it was just, oh, stuck for a lot. Like, I was like, oh, no. Like, oh, no, it's, uh, you know, it's not working. Like, uh, whatever. Like, you know, like, it was just nasty. It was just nasty. Oh, stuck for a lot. Like, it was just so bad. It was so bad. It was so bad. And, um... Now comes the time of Eid, and it was the bigger Eid, because I remember, like, no one fasting at this time, you know, but I remember it was the bigger Eid, because it lasted, like, for the three days, or whatever the case might be, I know, you know, it was the, yeah, it was the bigger Eid, um, uh, Eid al-Adha, and um, there was this abandoned, abandoned house that was on the block, right, like, it was just this abandoned house, no one lived in it, no one bought it, it was like one of those things, it was just an abandoned house. And what happened was they made the plan. They're like, listen, we're going to have this Eid party, right? We're going to have this Eid party. This Eid party is going to be lit. It's going to be great. Da, 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 da. And, uh, you know, we're going to have some cigarettes over there. We're just going to get a bunch of snacks. It's just going to be a fun party overall. Now, this is going to be in the Jahiliya diary that, inshallah, I feel so nauseous, bro. Like, oh, I feel just sick to my stomach. This is going to be a Jahiliya diary that I make and, you know, we're going to bring those seasons back inshallah as well too. But this is just something I had to get off my chest, guys. Honestly, I don't know how else to describe it. I don't know. I don't know. This is when Allah wanted me to do it. That's the point. Allah wanted me to do it now. He wanted me to share the story with you guys now. He didn't want to share it any other time. It was just now is when He wanted me to do it. And um, I'm sorry if anyone feels uncomfortable from this and, you know... But this is the reality. This is the reality that things that take place, you know, grooming gangs are real. People, you know, it's just disgusting. May Allah protect our ummah from these things. May Allah protect our youth from these things. May Allah protect like and shield us from these things, you know. I mean, so it, I'll, I'll tell you more about this, but like I was someone who was smoking cigarettes at that age already, like. Me and smoking had a relationship. Me and I was smoking for a while. Like, like I've had my, I think I had my first cigarette at the age of eight or nine. Like, yeah, I know, right? You're playing Pokemon cards at eight or nine years old. I'm having a cigarette. Like, pfft, what's going on in life, right? Um, and they, they, they go to this house. They go to this house, this abandoned house. And uh, I remember me being one of the last people to get there. So, like, you know, like, 
life is happening and you know they're already there because I knew they were going to be at that time and I, and I go there and something's telling me not to go there you know like I love these guys these are like my best friends and it's just oh my god like oh my god I love hanging out with them but this is the only time in my life that I felt like I just did not want to be around them at all and um I go I we you had to hop the gate over you had to hop the like the wall or whatever to get over it because it's an abandoned house one has no keys for it um and we hop the wall. I can hear them. So I know they're there. I can hear them. I go in and one person already greets me. And it's just like all excited for me to come in and all that. So I could smell the cigarettes. I can smell. I'm like, all right, it's a party now, right? I go around to turn the corner. And they have this kid who's probably the same age as me. Basically performing oral sex for like two of two of the men. And it is the most disturbing sight that you could see. And like as a kid, you know, it's just so bad. Like, like, like even now, like I could imagine, it, I could remember it. But Subhanallah, this memory of mine has been. It was locked away. It was like Allah suppressed it, put it away, just threw it away. And as of recently, like maybe about about a year. It's gonna be a year. It's not full year yet. About a year. Um, Allah just resurfaced it. You know, for whatever reason, he felt best. And I believe it's so I can share it with you guys. And I can tell you guys the truth of what's happened uh, in my life. And what possibly happens to a lot of people in their lives. Maybe not as extreme, but to some degree like that. You know, and I could see why people don't want to share these things. Because it's embarrassing. You know, people to know. Uh, family members to know. Then what if they don't believe you? What if they ask why it took you so long? And... And all these other details. And, you know, they probably know them too. And you don't want them to think negatively of them as well too. So you want to sort of protect them and shield them. And, 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 and like not expose their honor or their sins. You know, like you don't want to do that to them. Um, and part of you feels wrong. Part of you feels like, why was I even there? The other part of you is just like, you know, why didn't I stop them? Why didn't I say nothing? There's so many emotions to this, guys, that I don't understand. And, you know... Subhanallah, this again all happens for a deeper and bigger reason that Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Uh, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala knows why these things happen, you know, and He not for one second left me or any of the people away. He never did. You know, He was with us the whole time. And that was the day I actually met the older people, the older people who were running the entire grooming gang. Now, I know the term grooming gang now. I didn't know what that was back then. They were just his dost, oh, dost, you know. I just knew that they were his friends, his older friends or whatever the case might be. And the friends were the ones coaching the younger people on how to do certain things, you know. And so you had like this one person who was the same age as me, like 11, 12, something like that, just literally on his knees, two dudes right over there, uh, and he was just literally, he has a cigarette in one part of his mouth, he has like a cigarette over here, and he's giving oral sex to both of those people. And the other side where these like little stairs going up, there were two dudes like making out with each other. Like it was disgusting. It was absolutely disgusting, you know? And it was just filth. It was complete and just shayateen. Like it was just disgusting. Disgusting. And the the adult people were just like sort of coaching them on what they need to do next and all that. They weren't getting in on it. They weren't getting in on the fun. They were sort of just watching it. And like, you know, this is the time before like cell phones and things like that. I could only imagine what they would have been doing in today's time where they would have been, uh, you know, recording it and this and that. And imagine blackmailing you and trying to make you do more things so that they don't expose what you're doing and what you've done already, you know, because it's completely filthy what they were doing. They were running a grooming gang in where they had targeted the older brother who was obviously someone that everyone looked up to, to deliver their sort of pointers and authority down to us because they knew that we wouldn't listen to them because we don't know them. We don't have a relationship with them. But they knew we would listen to the older brother. So he was the one encouraging us all to do this. May Allah forgive him as well too because he doesn't know what he was getting into. You know, it was wrong. And uh, I even remember seeing them years later, years later, and all of us acting like, Nothing ever happened because you're not going to mention that part of your life. Like that part is disgusting in your life. Like, oh, astaghfirullah. Like it's truly shaitan. It's truly shaitan. Shaitan is literally your open enemy, guys. Like trying to have you to do these things. These things are not natural. 
There's things, this is not a natural thing. There's an inclination. There's a, you know, sort of, sort of, um, you know, there's a, there's like a sexual identity being developed at this time and age because it's like the time of puberty, you know? So naturally your hormones are all out of whack. And, you know, people who know I'm talking about, they probably just get like a boner in the middle of class and they don't know what to do about it, you know? And they're just sort of sitting there like legs crossed and all that sort of, they don't know what to do. Like, like, you know, you have these things anyways. And now a person's literally over here to satisfy that for you. You've never had a feeling or sensation like this too. And shaitan is over there. He's doing the waswasa and everyone's doing it. And you're like... All right, time to get it done as well too. So this person literally has a cigarette. We all have cigarettes. So they get me in there. They know I love smoking. So they're trying to give me a cigarette immediately. You know, I'm, I'm lighting a cigarette up and everything. I'm just looking at everything that's happening right now. Like, I can't even believe this happened. Like, sharing this with you guys, I suck for a lot. Like, it feels like it didn't happen. It feels like it was a dream. Like, this whole thing is a dream. But I'll tell you why I know it's not a dream in just a minute. Um and I just remember this whole scenario, like the house was sort of so run down, like this place was abandoned. Imagine the jinn and shayateen that just lived in this place, in this vicinity already. And so you're coming and, and there's a reason, there's a reason the shaitan had us do the dirty work there. There's a reason because that's where all of his minions are. You get me? Like that's where they are. They could do the waswasa upon you and any minor or major possessions that are happening could happen then and there. And may Allah protect all of our children from these disgusting things and these grooming gangs because they're out there, guys. They might call themselves something else. They might give themselves a different name, you know, but, you know, they're getting groomed. You know, whether that be for, you know, regular sexual stuff or homosexual stuff, like they're getting groomed. And this like it's really, really important for you to monitor your children, especially those who have older cousins. And they get cool with those older cousins because most of the children uh, learn about these things from their older cousins. And the older cousins might not even know that they're doing this, but they're grooming that kid without even knowing it. You know, I would have been like they don't even know. So many older cousins are putting on the younger cousins to pornography at like the age of 11 or age of 12 or probably even younger than that but they're getting groomed but they don't even know themselves you know and the cousins probably don't even know that they're grooming them they just think it's fun and games you know but it's not it it, it affected me it affected me it affected me for a long part of my life before like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just suppressed it for me and just let me live my life because I was I was I was in real like I didn't know what to do so whew, what happens is, alhamdulillah, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got us out of there, and that's what matters the most. Um, so, it's a filthy place anyways, right? Jin, shayati, and all that sort of stuff. It's midday. Everyone's smoking cigarettes, having chips, having like, you know, a bottle, you know, want to have a Pepsi. They're, they're, imagine this, imagine this, imagine this. Getting the youngsters in off, off of uh, Pepsi's and snacks and cigarettes. Imagine that's how they are, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Bribing them or getting them in, you know? Like just some something so small, you know? Don't like, like, come on. Like if someone is giving you random gifts, it's not free. Nothing's free. Nothing is free, you know? And I had to learn this the hard way. There's nothing free out there, guys. Someone is trying to get a leg up on you. It's disgusting. And when they say a leg up on you, I really mean a leg up on you. They're probably trying to do something nasty to you. Stuck for Allah. May Allah protect our children and from shaitan and everything in the generations to come. Allahumma, I mean, please be careful. Watch your children, guys. I, I As a parent, I could see how important it is for me to not leave my children around, no matter who it is. Because shaitan, we're not angels. Shaitan comes to every one of us, guys. Shaitan comes to every one of us in different forms, in different ways, in different manners. So now they've given me a cigarette. They have all this stuff going on. And now they're saying, all right, it's your turn. It's your turn. They're not, they don't want me to perform the oral sex. They want me to get it done by this guy, this kid, this peer of mine, this peer of mine. He's there. They want him, to, me to get it done from him. And this time, instead of two in a row, they want to give him three in a row. And they just keep gassing him up like, oh my God, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great, like positive reinforcements. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. And this poor child, this poor child, like I don't even know what's happened to him. Like I don't even know where he is at this point. Like if he's alive, if he killed himself, like honestly, like something like that could be serious trauma, guys. Like I don't even know, like subhanAllah, may Allah like protect him. I don't even know what's up with him. You know, like these type of things can affect your soul. You get me? So, 
they immediately tell me to pull my pants down. Astaghfirullah. Imagine, 11 years old, 11 years old, what are you doing? They're telling me to pull my pants down to get it done. So you have one, two. So imagine, it's like one, two, and I'm the third on the left side over here too. And I am just so hesitant. I am just like, this is not it. This is not cool. But there's so much pressure. There's so much pressure. It's hard to explain. There's so much pressure to do it. And then Allah saves me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves me. He has, he's coming around. He has one a cigarette in one part of his mouth. And what he's doing is that a few seconds with them, a few seconds with them, and now it's my turn. So he does it to them, gives them oral sex to them. And I'm sorry if you had to change this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I don't mean to be graphic with you guys. But I just need to let you know that this is what was happening. This is what's going down. And, you know, my, my, that's not my goal. I know people, children, and everything like this, they watch these channels. And I know I put a, you know you know, like disclaimer in the beginning, but children can still watch this. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry that you're watching this, but parental supervision is advised for a reason. Do not allow your children to watch this alone. You gotta be of age because this is disgusting. But this is the real world of what's going on. So he's giving them oral sexual stuff for a few seconds. Then he's pivoting to the next person in the middle. And then it comes to me. And when he tries to put my privates in his mouth, the cigarette burns me. Subhanallah. The cigarette burns me and I'm like, ah! And immediately, I just run out of there and I just hop the fence and I run over back to my house. Alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. That cigarette burned me. Till this day, I have a mark there. That's how I know it wasn't a dream. The cigarette burns me. And immediately I scream, I'm like, ah, I scream. I pull my pants up and I run out of there. But what about the kids who didn't get out? <laughs> What about the kids who didn't get out? What about the kids who stayed there for hours? What happened to them? What happened to them? This is like a thing that we all have to live with. But what happened to them? At least I got out. And I didn't even get help. I didn't even tell anyone. I didn't even stop it. I didn't even do something. I could have helped them. I could have done something. But this is Qadr Allah. This is Qadr Allah. This is, this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted it to be. You have no idea how much this messed me up. How confused I was with my sexuality for like a good amount of years to come after that. Just confused, you know, like, you know, like I know what's right from wrong. I think I do at least. But, you know, like at the end of the day, like, you know, even in Islam, you know, like, you know, a brother looks beautiful for the sake of Allah. Just, it's just handsome. Just handsome. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put nur on their face. There's beauty within them, you know? And you said, MashaAllah, brother, you're looking so handsome. MashaAllah, barakallah. You look so beautiful. MashaAllah, barakallah. Imagine as a kid, you know, you see another kid or someone who you just want to compliment. Say, oh, you look beautiful. MashaAllah, so handsome. Allahumma barik. You know? But shaitan puts his waswasa and tells you that maybe you're gay. Maybe, maybe you need to explore. Maybe you need to talk to them. Maybe there's something else. And 
you know, I, I realize this now that it was from a blessing from Allah because a lot of times when people are struggling with like sexual identity or gender identity or homosexual thoughts or whatever the case might be, I always, you know, when I make videos about this and you can check them out, like somehow I was always able to understand them at a different level. And now I understand why. I really understand why. Where's the empathy coming from? Where does this happen from? Where I totally, I get what they mean. I get what they're going through. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed me to get through that and overcome it. You know, alhamdulillah, by His grace and His mercy, He allowed me to overcome it. You know, nothing else. I, there's nothing special about me. There's nothing, there's nothing good about me. There's nothing good. But it happened. It happened. It happened. And it's sad that it happened. It's sad that it happened, but it happened. And to anyone who's been through any type of sexual abuse or any type of thing like this, one of the things that stop us from talking about it is the fact that no one will believe us or they won't take us serious or they'll just think that, oh, they're seeking attention or they're trying to like, I don't know. I don't know what goes on in people's heads. And I'm sure there are people who would who do do that, but why would anyone do that? Like, why would I come over here and say this to you now that I'm, you know, like old enough? Like, I have children of my own, I have a family, I have, I have everything to lose right now. I have embarrassment upon embarrassment that can happen, but I need to help the ummah. And helping the ummah means that you got to be a little vulnerable sometimes. You got to share things that's happened to you. You got to deal with these traumas. And on Eid, because it happened on Eid, and it's Eid day now, today is like the 6th or 7th of Shawwal. Eid just passed by, and it just brought up so many memories. And I just knew that I had to make this video. I had to, I had to, I had to. And this is something Allah wanted me to do. Allah wanted me to do it now, not a month ago, not a few months ago, or yesterday. Allah wanted me to do this now, because this is when He knew I was ready. This is when he knew you were ready. And may Allah give me the courage to even post this because so many times, I, you know, these videos I don't even post, guys, just because I don't feel like, oh, it's, you know, shaitan, da, 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 whispering in my ear. But this one's different. This one needs to go out. People need to know what it was. People need to know the truth. They need to know the truth. The truth, the truth is the truth, you know, and may Allah forgive them. May Allah forgive them because they wronged us, man. They wronged these kids. They wronged me. They wronged the whole group of us, man. That was wrong of what they did. And I don't know what's happened to them. I, I wouldn't even be able to remember their faces. I would not even be able to remember the faces. I don't even know. But I could see how Allah suppressed this memory in my mind so that I'm not getting affected by it every single day. Like I could imagine like needing therapy, therapy, therapy after this. Like, I'm at, Don't you think that someone would need therapy after this? But alhamdulillah, by Allah's permission, He's gotten me through it because He is my therapist. You know, I talk to Him. Not that you shouldn't have a real therapist, obviously, right? But, you know, Allah has surrounded me around some really, really good brothers that I can talk to about these things. Knowledgeable people, people who care about me, they love me. And they're willing to hear my side of the things out and they're willing to help me out with things like this and I appreciate them. And, you know, to all my friends and family out there who heard this for the first time. <laughs> I don't know if you think less of me or you're disgusted by me or you're making fun of me or I don't know. I don't know what. But it's the truth. It's the truth. And that's all I have to say. <laughs>